Hey, Dave LaCallion with Head Games Motorworks. Today, we are gonna talk about BR38 and GSC's brand new valves for it. Check it out. All right, so this is GSC's brand new. Uh, so they, we did is we went up in stem diameter and we changed materials. There's actually some slight changes on the design of the valve. The face is a little bit different and added a little bit margin here. So the margin is thicker. I'm gonna show you the, this is the old valve. So the old valve is six millimeter stem. So they, they both go down to five and a half millimeter stem. That's how they work. And then when you look at the face of the valve, Face the valve is completely different here. And I said we added margin. And the margin is going to take heat away from the valve. And that's this area right here. It takes heat away from the valve. So again, these are made for like a 2,500 horsepower GTR. I mean, I guess it could work for almost anything, but this will make it so the valve is not going to bend. It's much more strong. It's much stronger. And uh, on the intake side, you see that's flat and this is like a dish now the dish the reason why we got rid of the dish is because the flat face is actually going to add strength to the valve and the problem we were having is that the valve was actually starting to uh, suck in basically it would it would tool up it would tool up the valve and then the valve wouldn't have the same height so what we did is we add material to this area here and although it did add weight and we also added some margin here. And now you have a valve that is super strong and it can handle anything you can throw at it. So whenever we're doing a valve, you need to make sure that even though you're increasing the margin, you wanna make up for it on the other side of the valve. And you also are gonna to wanna to check out how does it fit in the chamber because chamber volume is gonna change if you, uh, obviously we mentioned it's a flat face valve, but if you add too much margin, the valve's sticking into the chamber a lot farther, and now you're changing a lot of dynamics of what's going on, and you don't make up for it on the other side, on the spring side and the tip side, you're gonna have a bad time. It's gonna be really hard to machine. So one thing we're gonna do is we take this bridge mic here and uh, you zero it against the deck, and then I'm gonna check what the uh, protrusion is into the chamber on just, so this is the off the shelf valve, and I'm gonna go right to the edge of the valve on the edge of the seat. And then once I get that number, I'm gonna change over to uh, same seat. So you have to do the same seat because you wanna make sure that measuring apples to apples. Now this head's old, it's been sitting around here. I have no idea, I don't wanna be measuring all the valves. So, and, um, and we're good, we're within like five thousandths, which is nothing. I think we're good to go there. Now on the exhaust side, we have to change the, we're gonna have to change the guides back and forth. Um, I'm not gonna show all that, but we actually did it off camera and we're actually still within five there. And I'm not gonna worry about five thousandths. We're gonna CC this, not on camera. We're gonna CC it, but this is all part of the process that we're gonna do. We're also gonna check spring height to make sure that that is good too. Part of that is checking protrusion. So you also, remember I mentioned that you have to make up for the geometry and the geometry of that is on this side because if you're gonna increase the margin, the valve is gonna to go towards the uh, piston basically. So you are, sucking the valve in on the spring side or the stem side. So you, we are gonna wanna check with a, um, with a mic and we're gonna see what the differences are there too. And I'm only gonna show the intake. So we're at like 70. And what we're doing is we're just ensuring that when you go to install this stuff and that's why GSE, they, count on our measurements to um, to look at stuff see same thing 75 which is nothing we are 74 so we're four thousandths on each direction 
not going to be a problem. We're also going to check spring height. It said not on camera, but um, we're just going to ensure that this is ready to go for production. So it doesn't just stop at measuring things. You really need to know what is the flow. So we stick it on our Superflow 600 flow bench and just know that we're not looking for absolute flow here. In, in this instance, the flow almost doesn't matter. Doesn't matter some, yes, like it's something we want to know, but the biggest attribute to going to this valve is not going to be for flow, it's going to be for longevity. So we're making that kind of power. You want something that is going to survive it. And sometimes we do things to these race heads that literally kill flow, but they help it. And one of those instances, just to throw something out there, is you've heard a lot of people talk about like a one angle valve job. You heard me talk about one angle valve job. And uh, it actually, sometimes on something that makes 3000 plus or 2500 plus, we will make the 45 degree angle valve of the valve, or I should say of the valve seat. We make that as wide as possible. And we do that because it's going to take heat away from the valve. So the wider we make the seat, the wider we make the contact patch, the more heat is gonna come out of that valve and at 100 pounds of boost or and, and, 100, and a 400 shot of nitrous, those type of things really, really matter. Heads don't just make themselves on the flow bench. You actually have to do some installation of check springs. So we use these little springs here and they have like no pressure. And this is, I mean, they have a little bit of pressure so they're gonna hold the valve open or closed depending on which direction we're going in and uh, this is what we do. So you have to use some kind of spring to hold the valve in. And what I do here is put the locks in the retainer and I'm gonna use this nifty tool. This is only half the tool and this makes it so I barely have to do anything. I just freaking love that tool. Now, look at me, look at me, look at me. So I put them in the retainer, one lock, two locks. So this is the stuff I don't show very often, guys. And sometimes it doesn't play nice, but it's way easier than trying to do it with your fingers. And we put buckets on top of that. And then the valve opening fixture goes on. That should be set up from the last time we just did this. And we have a nifty valve opening fixture. So this is the valve opening fixture that opens up both valves at one time. And we made it for doing it with a 2JZ bucket. Now actually, see it's the feaster side. So actually we made this, uh, well, we didn't make this, George Owanu back in uh, the early 2000s when we were the Street Glow racing team. I just left Lucy's, he made it for me. So we had a way of opening up vo both valves at one time. So what I'll do now is I'll set this kind of close and then I'll finalize it on the bench. Now this is just going to open and close the valves. It has this rod here that pushes this fixture down and we can measure it with the dial indicator.
totally not the outcome that I was expecting. Of course, I was expecting it to hurt it <clears throat> because of the thicker margin, because the valve kind of sticks up in the chamber a little bit more. I thought that it would be an issue, but it turned out that it wasn't at all. And you could uh, run the, this uh, flat face valve and actually pick up flow. Uh, totally surprised. I, I actually had to do it twice because I didn't know if it was a real thing or not. All right, so now it's on to the intake side. So it's super important on the intake side that we put an orifice. What we do is we take a little bit of modeling clay and we stick it in, on the port and then round it off so the air is not hitting the intake manifold. Basically, I'm sorry, the intake flange. Uh, you're straightening the air out as it goes in because air does not like sharp edges. And uh, I think that guys who use very sharp edges on their dividers, if they thought how they are gonna flow test this um, and they don't leave a sharp edge, they would realize that it actually picks up airflow to also blunt the edges of their dividers. Now we didn't see big gains on the intake side, but we did see a gain. So 10 CFM was about as much as we're gonna see out of the intake side, but we, we're not really concerned about the flow. Understand again, that this is less about flow, but more about longevity, we just wanted to know. But the gain's a gain and I'll take it. Now obviously we're gonna add a lot of material to the valve and that is gonna add weight. Does the weight really matter here? I would rather take the weight in order to get the longevity, that's why it's there but we would still want to just check it and see where we're at. I think we're going to be about five to 10 grams heavier, um, but let's take a look. Now we got this nifty, I don't want to call it a weed scale, a little scale we got. So here is the regular valve. Weight is always an, a question, right? So we're at 48.8 grams on that. Now we have the flat face valve, the flat face valve. You can feel it is heavier and we're at 59.4. Um, so we're a little bit heavier. Now let's take the uh, exhaust valve. The exhaust valve, we are at 49.1. This is the GSE off the shelf valve. Now here is a bigger tulip. We added margin, we added stem diameter. It is 56.2. Now we've actually had these valves custom made from another company and uh, the valves were actually heavier than this and they worked really, really well. So the little bit of weight is not gonna be a concern for me because uh, it, although it does weigh more, it weighs more because we add material so that's a given, and we just have to accommodate that with a valve spring. Now, most of the valve springs that are available besides GSC don't have enough spring pressure, I think, to use these valves. So that is something else you have to consider, that you can't just use any spring kit with a GSC uh, valve. You can't, I'm trying not to name names, but uh, there's a certain company that, you know, they make their own lock and they make all that, their own stuff, and it's made for their valves and it's not made for these valves. So you have to just run GSC with GSC and I think you'll be good. All right, so we've checked weight, we checked flow, we checked the measurements, everything checks out that these valves are uh, good for production. So we're gonna report all this stuff to GSC, they're gonna come out with this valve and you're gonna have something that we know actually flows better and it measures the same, it's gonna go in the head the same so you guys are gonna have, I mean, this is, again, for a guy making, I'm gonna say 2,000 plus. 2,000 plus, you're not gonna have a problem buying this valve, put it in your car, you know you're gaining airflow, and you are gonna gain uh, longevity. It's, you don't have to worry about exhaust valves bending, you don't have to worry about intake valves tulipping, you're not gonna have to worry about all the things that you've previously had to worry about with off-the-shelf valves. Not only just GSC, but this goes for other manufacturers 
um, and that's why we did this. All right, it's going to do it for us today. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment below. I'd love to hear from you. Toodles.